Hey guys, welcome back. I'm out here at my campsite and something came to mind that I wanted to talk about. What would I do differently if I started minivan camping from scratch all over again? And first, the most important thing that I would do is don't buy anything. I came out on this trip expecting to have shore power. I expected to use a hot plate, electricity, all these kind of things. And this site didn't even have shore power. So I brought all these electronics, expecting to plug into the grid and there's nothing here. In the end today, I used this simple stove that I have that I bought after doing this for a few months when I really decided, hey, I need a dedicated propane stove. And when I first started out, I bought all kinds of stuff. It turned out that I didn't need any of that you're not gonna know what you need until you do several trips like this. So my number one advice is use the stuff you have. So don't buy anything. If you have a blanket or if you have a cot or if you have pillows and you're just going out camping for the first time, just take that blanket and those pillows and see if this is something that you actually enjoy before investing a lot of your hard earned money in all of this fancy camping supplies. And in fact, when you do eventually start getting stuff, I found that a lot of your normal stuff that you find at home is just as suitable as the fancy stuff that you would get from the camping supply store. So once you've really got it figured out, you've done a couple trips, you've used just the plain stuff that you have, then I would probably start with your comfort items. For me, the most important thing is to be comfortable during these trips. And so I opted to get a bed with a mattress that is very comfortable and I sleep basically like a baby every night when I'm in there. In fact, if I only had that bed, I could do this with pretty much nothing else, especially if I'm just going on a road trip and I'm gonna eat fast food. I know everybody hates it, but if you don't have a stove and you're not gonna do multiple trips, there's no point in cooking food on the road unless you're just really trying to get into the experience. So sleeping comfortably is number one. And in addition to that, my bed is a narrow twin size bed. So it's the same size as a cot or an RV bed. It was easy to find sheets for it. I use a regular pillow. I use a sleeping bag that I've had literally for 20 years, the same sleeping bag system. I've used that so long, it still works great, no problems. Some other comfort items I like to have is a good jacket that I can always keep in the van, a beanie. So even like today, we're in the middle of spring. The high was 80 yesterday. If I get cold, I have a little beanie in there I can throw on my head just to keep my head warm when I wake up. Also, and this is gonna sound like common sense, I don't like to wear my shoes in the van, so I keep my Crocs with me. And in fact, I forgot my Crocs on this trip, so I don't even have them, so I'm going barefoot in it. Once you've decided on those comfort items and you've decided, hey, you, you are into this and you really love it, that's when I would go with those other necessities like maybe a small stove, there are multiple kinds of stoves out there and various stoves have various pros and cons. For example, gas stoves are dangerous to use in the van potentially. Uh, they cause gas like carbon monoxide and then they also are a fire hazard and you wouldn't want to have any issues there. But on the other hand, an electric hot plate does require access to electricity. And like I said earlier, I don't have the electricity that I assumed I would have today. So my hot plate is basically a brick right now, useless for this trip. But I can always pull out my propane stove, put it on a picnic table, or even I put it sometimes on the ledge of my door there in the van, and I can make my coffee in the morning. And don't forget, something super important is the ability to use the restroom. So I do have a small folding collapsible bucket. They're super popular in the minivan camping community, but for me, that is for emergency use only, and I'd much rather use a freestanding building that I don't have to carry around anything that I don't want to have to deal with later. So in this case, I picked a campsite and I didn't plan this, but the outhouse is right there close to me. And if I need to use it, I just walk right over there. There's nothing more uncomfortable than trying to sit on a bucket this high and do my business when I can easily go to a truck stop, a gas station, whatever and I don't have the mess to deal with later. So as I figured out more and more what kind of things I wanted, I decided that for me, a bed, a fridge, and a way to keep that fridge charged were the most essential things for me to be comfortable. And so I have a 200 watt solar panel on my roof. I have my nice memory foam bed, and then I have a mini fridge that keeps food frozen and cool at all times. And I also have a power station to keep the fridge going. Those things, in my opinion, 
are not necessary. They're way above and beyond what you actually need to be comfortable in your van. You don't really need a refrigerator. There's multiple ways to have fresh food without a refrigerator. For me, the priority of all those items is that comfortable bed. If I'm not comfortable sleeping, there's no way I'm gonna be comfortable minivan camping. If you're already a very experienced camper, tell me in the comments, what are some things that you absolutely must have that you take with you every time? Then once you have those comfort items and those cooking necessities and other necessities is safety items. There are two safety items that I think are an absolute must. And I, as I'm making this video, I realize I only have one of them. I have this carbon monoxide monitor that I keep in the van and that carbon monoxide sensor will beep very loudly if there's any kind of carbon monoxide buildup in the van. And that could indicate possibly a fire or if I'm cooking, it can indicate that I have too high of a concentration just while I'm cooking. For me, the big benefit of this carbon monoxide monitor is if there's a fire in the middle of the night and I'm sleeping, that thing is so loud that it will wake me up and allow me to escape the van if necessary. That's like a really rare occurrence, but it is something that why not plan ahead for that? You have these in a standard brick and mortar house when you're sleeping, so why not have one in your van? And the second item that I'm gonna order immediately after pushing this video out is a fire extinguisher. If you do have a small fire and you can control it, you might as well have a fire extinguisher. So equally as important as the fire extinguisher and the carbon monoxide monitor is your load plan. I don't really hear any van life videos ever talking about the load plan, but for my minivan, because it's a no build minivan camper, I like to keep everything as low as possible in the back of the van. That way, if I am in a forward collision, everything is low and it's not gonna go flying around. And if I really wanted to get this thing more safe, I would screw everything into the floor so that nothing will move at all. So if you look at my fridge, it's low, my bed is low, my shelf is low. There's nothing floating around up in the sky right here. And the reason is, is if I had like this goal zero brick that weighs one or two pounds sitting on my bed right here and I got in an accident, well, that thing is just gonna go flying through the windshield or it could hit me in the back of the head. And I don't think that would be a pleasant experience if I recovered from it. So for that reason, everything behind me is my mattress, my blankets, and my windows covers so that if I do have a collision, just those soft things are floating around behind me. And this is like physics. So if you're going straight and you have a straight impact, things should fly generally straight. Now they could bounce around eventually, but that first impact is usually the most dangerous. And I don't want to overemphasize that because I know if you are doing a minivan camper setup, you're probably driving very safely and slowly and you're not trying to like go hundred miles an hour in a 50, I hope. <laughs> Something else really important to keep in mind is if you're not enjoying yourself, then something's not right. If you're hot and you have the ability, go to someplace cooler. There really aren't a lot of reliable ways to cool or heat these things besides running the vehicle while you're sleeping. And I absolutely would never recommend running the vehicle while you're sleeping because that can also cause a carbon monoxide hazard. So the biggest comfort issues that you're really gonna deal with when minivan camping are gonna be hot weather and cold weather. If it's extremely hot outside, there aren't really any reliable ways to cool the minivans off. So you can try things like portable air conditioners, which really use a lot of electricity. So unless you have access to shore power, those things are not really suitable for minivan camping. There's also swamp coolers and all these other kinds of things but they require a lot of work for only a little bit of cooling efficiency so in reality you really need to try to put this van in an environment that has a comfortable temperature for you other side is cold so if it's extremely cold you can always layer up you can add more you know blankets you can add better clothing the number one piece of equipment that i would use in a cold weather environment is simply a heated blanket and the reason is they don't use that much power. My little electric heated blanket right here pulls 50 to 100 watts intermittently, but it will only heat my immediate area that's under the blanket. So I don't really ever envision having a van that is 70 degrees on the inside and 20 degrees on the outside in a snowstorm. It's just not gonna happen unless of course you have shore power and some kind of HVAC you know, that hangs out of the window 
or something like the EcoFlow Wave or a portable heater that's hooked up to shore power. Something else that's really important to comfort is feeling safe at night. So this is different from actual safety, which is like the fire hazards and things like that. I feel safer at night or I feel more comfortable at night when I block out my windows. And the reason is, is I sometimes worry that I'm gonna wake up and someone's gonna be staring right at me through my window. And for that reason, when I go to sleep, I always put my privacy curtains or my stealth camping shades up in my windows so that I have kind of a closed area where no one's gonna be looking at me. And if anybody wants to contact me, they'll have to knock on the window or knock on the door to talk to me. And those shades really do make a difference. So for example, last night I slept with my front windows down. In my mind, just having like no one staring at me, which, hey, I'm out in the middle of the woods, but there are campers here and you never know. There might be some curious campers that come and look in your van. But I felt safe with these curtains up, even though my windows were wide open. A squirrel or a raccoon could have tried to come in and there's not much I could do about that, but I didn't feel like I was in danger. Another comfort item that you can try are these window screens. So my windows are down and these keep the bugs from coming in. But one thing you really have to understand is even with these screens on and my windows down, my van still maintains a temperature three to five degrees hotter than the outside temperature. So it's not like I'm going to put these screens on and it's magically going to get colder in the van in a hot day. It does help with airflow. It keeps me fresh feeling. But once those temperatures hit like 90 or 100, these things really don't offer that much cooling capability because the breeze doesn't cool down the van as much as you might imagine. But one thing they absolutely work with is keeping the bugs out of the van. So bugs are one thing that can ruin your night. I do keep my windows cracked basically at all times to prevent some of that heat buildup in the van. And occasionally you'll get like a wasp or a spider that crawls through the window there. And you just got to get rid of those bugs to sleep comfortably. And my last big tip is to do some test runs. If you're in a house and you're planning to go camping on a long-term trip, some folks like to go, for example, cross country and they're planning to do a minivan camping or a small vehicle camping experience for a week or two and they've never tried it before, try it out in your driveway. Just literally just go park in your driveway, camp in your van, see what you needed, see what you didn't need, and make some adjustments based on that. If you have time, do a couple of nights. For example, sleep a couple of nights out in the van in your driveway and you can really experience how it might feel on the road. You may feel a certain way in your driveway, like comfortable, safe, and then get out on the road and realize that every little noise keeps you up. Hey, is there somebody trying to break in? Am I parked in a place where I shouldn't be parked and someone's gonna come bother me? Those kind of concerns can amplify the further away you get from your sticks and bricks home. And you don't wanna be out on the road with a certain budget thinking that your small vehicle is gonna be the place that you're staying and then decide at 2 a.m., hey, I have to go to a hotel because I just don't feel comfortable doing this. So make sure you get a couple trips in try to go to some of the local places. So if you if you start in your yard, if you start in your driveway, maybe graduate to a Cracker Barrel parking lot or some other place that allows you to camp in those parking lots. You know, you may not have a choice. If you don't have a choice, it is what it is. Do what you need to do. But if you do have the choice and you're just starting to do this, get out and slowly graduate yourself. Train yourself to be more comfortable as you go out. I'm at the point now where if I go park somewhere, I'll hear cars driving by, I'll hear people walking by, for example, on a city street, and it doesn't bother me because I know that they really don't even think about my minivan. It's, it's not something they look at and say, hey, there's probably someone camping in there. Okay guys, so I just wanted to make that quick video, and I would say I presented these things possibly out of order today. I think number one is that safety. So if you are sleeping in your vehicle, Go with those safety items first, carbon monoxide detector and a fire extinguisher. Then I would go with the comfort items and then the necessities. And it sounds like it might be out of order, but safety is number one, comfort's number two. And then those other necessities, they're not really essential until you start doing long-term camping. If you are gonna be stopping at McDonald's every day for your coffee and your biscuit, you don't need a stove and things like that. So those cooking necessities aren't that essential. And then keep in mind, don't buy anything unless you absolutely need it. And then the last thing is 
make sure you set yourself up to feel comfortable because if you're not comfortable, then there's probably something you need to change, whether it's what you're doing or something inside of your van. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me what I missed in the content. What is something that you recommend that other folks would do if they're getting into small vehicle camping? And give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next adventure.